Hi, I'm Bob Alsop with Shop Saver CNC. Around here, they call me Router Bob. A lot of millwork projects have an assembly called a die wall, and that's what we're gonna look into in this video. Let's get started. A die wall is a really common structure in millwork, and, and that could be a cash wrap, it could be a nurse's station, it could be a bank interior, all of those things. And what a die wall really is, is a short wall, a certain height. Now it could be something as, as simple as two by fours, but in our case, we're gonna actually make a curved die wall out of plywood. And I think you're gonna really enjoy it. Now, the other thing about it is uh, I want to keep the software minimal. So all we're using for the entire project is VCarve Pro. Let me show you how to set it up. This is VCarve Pro, and this is how I did the setup. Now, if you notice, there's multiple sheets here, and they're different sizes. I just thought that was easier, but first thing we want to look at is in a die wall is what do we have to make? Well, this is a cross section, and this is normally going to come off from a from an architect, perhaps, or plans. So what you've got is you've got a plate. So there's a plate down here, and there's a plate right there. And that those plates then uh, are curved, and then you have studs that go between them, and that's what this is. So when you see that, that's the stud. And it all fits together. And so, and then underneath it, we have these holes here are for wires. So in a typical setup like this, there would probably be a desk surface over here and drawers and stuff. So you need a way to run wires at the top and at the bottom. And once again, you can do that any way you want. Now, if we go up here, this top is actually Corian or solid surface. And then this is a plywood support that's underneath it. So we'll cut that too. So that's also going to have the same curvature. So, so you kind of have to understand where the information comes from. So basically I started with that. Now let's look at some more information. This is how it's actually set up. So I'm doing this in VCar Pro so you can see it's, it's really not that difficult. Okay, we start out with this line right, right here represents the curvature in the wall, and it has a radius, and this is the center point of it here. It happens to be 156 inches. And once you know that, everything else is built off that line. So let's, let's take a look at this. So right here, this is a top, this is actually a, a top rail, and it has the dados in it, okay? And then uh, this represents the, the, the top that goes underneath the Corian top. So that's really enough information. Now let's look a little closer at some joinery here. Now, if you notice what I did here was I, I used dog bones. Now here's why. If you use dog bones, your piece that fits in here is square, so you can, you can dial it in where it really fits well. Now, I normally don't use dog bones in, if it's viewable, but in something like this, everything's covered up in a finished job, so it works out pretty good. And I put these holes in there, and I did that so we can screw it together. And then if you notice, if, if you drew a line from here out there, you see everything's angled towards that center. So that works out pretty good. And the spacing in here between centers is 16 inches. It started with the middle and it works on, on both directions. This is actually a plate. Think about this as a plate. It's, there's a bottom and a top plate and they're actually symmetrical or virtually identical. So because of the design, that's not always the case. But here's my problem. Um, from here to here is about 10 feet. So I can't do this with eight foot material. So I need, I need to splice it. So I thought, well, I'll just do that. And I'm gonna, I don't want the splices all to stack, so I'm gonna move them over here. So one's gonna be here, and then when it flips over for the top, it'll show up over here. So that makes it all locked together. And, um, and I'll show you how I did that splice. Now let's take a look at that joint. Let's look at it up close. You can see it's just a simple cut. Uh, this is an offset about three quarters of an inch. Once again, you can vary that, but what I, I wanted it to just to be easy to cut. And then, of course, there's one on the, the that matches on the other part. And so we'll cut two of each of these. Then we've got our dados, and we've got our little pockets here with the dog bones. All right, so that's basically it. We, we need two of these and two of these. That makes the plates. And then this is what the actual uh, the studs look like. And let me show you the jewelry. Now, this is another, another form of dog bone. All right, and once again, the reason I use that is because it's it's not going to show, and it helps me get really, really good alignment. And so that's all that is is just another form of dog bone, and and uh, they're not these are not symmetrical because of the location of the holes. So this is one of the holes. This is the other one, 
and there's actually nine of these, but the two outside ones don't get the holes. So that's where all the parts come from. All right, here's what the nest looked like. There's the parts for the top, there's two of the plates, and then if we go over here, there's the studs and the other two short plates. Now, one of the things that, that, that's critical about this is the material thickness. Now, what I did when I drew these, I actually drew everything nominal size, so the width of this dado is three quarters, even though the material is 0.71. So I could say, okay, well, how do you fix that? Well, one of the things we have to do is we have to figure out exactly what offset is required to get the right fit. So I'll show you how I did that. If you notice on this sheet, I made uh, five little rectangles here, which represent the uh, thickness of the material. And so what you do is then you make a cut with a certain offset, and then you can take a piece and test it, make sure it's the right size. Then once you know what that offset becomes, then you can actually offset the tool pads that are used for this, and it'll give you a, a, a nice fit. But making this little operation to start with helps you determine what the correct offset's gonna be. And then if we look at the other nest, just more of the same, different parts, but the concept is, is identical. Now, let's look at the tool pathing. Here's the first nest. Let me show you the tool pathing I used. To start with, we've got five millimeter holes that get drilled, that's what that is. Okay, then we machine our pockets, and let's look at that because this allowance right here, this is what makes the adjustment uh, because the material center. Let me show you how to look at that. So there's the tool path, but if I click that, all of a sudden you see, now you see the difference. That's the 20 thousandths. And once again, I've determined that by making a sample cut, fitting a piece, and determining what offset worked out. So that's how that worked. And you wanna make sure that your dog bones and the corners are large enough so that it doesn't close them off and skip them. So that's how that's done. You can see that's what that allowance is. That's this number right here. And once again, the first thing I did when I got to the machine was make those sample cuts appear to figure out what the perfect fit was. All right, so that's that one. And then finally, when we cut the parts out, that's the outside. And once again, that's going to be, uh, we're using a three flute tool at 1100 inches a minute, I believe. So that works out pretty good. So that's how we tool path the first sheet. Now let's take a look at the second sheet. Pretty much the joiner is the same, except we have an addition of, of one other thing. We have these holes here. All right. So we have our five millimeter drill and then we cut our pockets. All right. That's just like we did before. And then we've added this tool path. This is the inside. And if I look at it, I did it in two passes. Now here's, you got a couple of choices here. You're gonna have a disc in there that's gonna be a projectile if you're not careful. So I thought, well, what I'll do is, they're two and a half inches in diameter. It's a 3 8 tool. I'll probably just cut through in two passes. And I'll, if you look at the passes, I've said, okay, I'm gonna leave a last pass of 30 thousandths. So it's like an onion skin. So it's gonna rough it out. It's going to leave 30 thousandths, then it's going to cut them out. If everything works, those parts should sit there. You always have the alternative of actually uh, pocketing that out if the, if the holes are too small. And then, of course, finally, then we had our outside cut, which, which was exactly like we did before. So that's how that, that's how that all works out. Now we've completed our design, we've done all the nesting, we've applied the tool pass. Now let's send the files out to the machine and let's go cut these parts out and let's assemble our die wall.
our curved die wall project came out really nice. Now these top panels actually get installed at the job site. I wanted to show you how nice the joinery came out. All our joints fit, just made a wonderful system. And the beauty of this is it took a couple dimensions and V-Car Pro and that's all. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you'd like to see more videos like this, be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you need more information, you can contact us at shopsaber.com. Thank you for watching.